Well, crazy times. I mean, really crazy times. Now, I see a recession coming, a probably a vicious, vicious recession coming. I just talked with uh, Michael Pento. He's of the same mindset that he thinks a recession is coming. And Charles Denner, of course, I've been interviewing for many years. He's also that uh, mindset. So the three of us all think so, and they're much smarter than I am. I'm going to defer to them. But the data that I'm looking at certainly shows that we have a recession coming. And with that recession, there's going to be lots and lots of upheaval to it. So let's just talk about this. Oh, and by the way, uh, YouTube loves the fact if you have subscribers. So I'm really close to a thousand. It's a mile post for them. If you like my video and some of the content we're bringing, please subscribe. We're not going to uh, chase you or send you anything in the mail or uh, ask for a donation or anything, but we just want to get up to a thousand so we can get better marketing with uh, with YouTube. So let's get back to my video. Let me, here's the title to this prop, to this video. And I'm going to tell you, I think you should get ready for a real estate collapse in some of our endangered cities. Now, you know, if you've been following my videos that we've been talking about the fact that we probably have a pretty good possibility of a severe correction in the real estate industry. I think we're going to be correcting all across all the asset classes. Real estate certainly not going to be uh, left out in any of them. We're not going to be immune to it for sure. So let me talk to the first one. So I'm going to tell you that uh, we certainly have a recession coming. You know, all the indicators that I've been hearing the fact that we've got a soft landing that's going to be in and we're going to uh, we're going to avoid a recession. I don't see how it's even remotely possible that that is going to happen. It looks to me like we have a recession and a pretty hard landing recession coming at us. Uh, all the indicators are there. If you look at this, once you cross this uh, this red line, uh, you know, you're committed to a recession. So the question then becomes how severe a recession are we looking at? Now, if you look at this one here, you can see the COVID, it was deep. It was really pervasive. It was across all asset classes, but it was short. Thank goodness it was short. It's still terrible recession, but short. This one has already crossed that line. I think that we are in the beginning of it. Lots of reasons for that. Of course, you know, we'll look, there's uh, that lag effect that everyone talks about with uh, when you get the uh, uh, Federal Reserve raising interest rates. It does take a while for it to, to come to work. So typically 12 to 18 months, and they started March of 2022. Gosh, it's only May of 2023. So if we're starting to slow down, it's only the very, very first uh, couple of uh, races, and we've had a lot of them since then. So just think what's coming to this. So let me go to my next slide. We can take a look at that. Now, now here, here's, the, here's the culprit is liquidity. You have to know that uh, you have to have fuel in the, in the uh, system in order to run the economy. The Federal Reserve popped it up. Look at this. They put trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in right after when we started going into COVID. They were scared to death. They didn't know what they were looking at. So they really juiced the economy and the economy responded. Holy cow, just exploded. Just exploded. What do you think is going to happen when you put trillions and trillions of dollars of cash into the economy? Everything exploded. You know, you had jewelry sales, car sales, luxury homes. People were wearing expensive sunglasses and expensive shoes. Spending all kinds of money out to dinner, going to the theater. Everybody was happy. Everybody was having a great time. But it's like borrowing on a credit card. You're out there while you're spending on your credit card. You're having a great time. But you have to pay when the uh, when the credit card comes due. And you can see here, this is when the credit got cut off, right at the very top. And it's been down ever since. Now, I'm going to tell you, it never stops where it's supposed to be. And the pendulum has gone beyond we are down to the lowest liquidity ever. We're at negative 4% on, on the uh, uh, change of data. The, uh, uh, and I'm going to tell you that it's never been this low before. So once you start draining the system, and we're draining $90 billion a month, that's over a trillion dollars a year being taken out. So remember when it popped up like that? We got the exact opposite. It's coming down, and it's coming down hard, and we're going to feel it. Now, when you have these rate hikes and this illiquidity, this is not an unusual thing. You find out where the, the weaknesses are. And, you know, we had the Latin American debt. We had the housing problems. You know, here's the uh, subprime crisis in, in 06, 07, 08, 09, 10. And we had um, right here, where it looks like we may be into the regional bank problems because more banks are in the news. Today, PacWest is... Uh, is in the news they have lost nine and a half percent of their capital 
in one week that, and that for a bank that's just like that's really really hard that's that's really tough so i wouldn't be a bit surprised if we don't see them uh going on a, a sales block soon but you can see this and it's all it goes right back to, to no liquidity so they put the money in now they're taking it out it's all across the globe too by the way you know so it wasn't but maybe four or five weeks ago that the the central bank of switzerland came to the federal reserve to do um uh, currency swaps and they took like a hundred billion dollars and it which was funny they borrowed the money from uh the federal reserve and then they guaranteed the credit swiss when they went down for the same money they just took from uh, for 100 billion bucks but they just took from the federal reserve so really the federal reserve backstop and they didn't have any money they couldn't do it so they went to the federal reserve so credit swiss now that's a that's a big bank that's that's old news but uh we're still feeling we're still going to feel the effects of that so, uh, you know, when we go back to the uh, great financial crisis, the big one, of course, was uh, Washington Mutual that went down for uh, was the number one, still the number one bank that we've ever had uh, uh, losses in. But in the last uh, three weeks, we've had number two, number three and number four and maybe PacWest become for number five. Those are some very, very big bank failures. And you know what? We're just getting started. This is just this is just beginning. So uh, things are going to get a lot worse than where they are. This is going to be really, really hard on, on people. And if you're dependent on banks and I, I'm going to tell you, we did a video uh, you know, two weeks ago talking about the fact that uh, the lenders for autos, you know, so that was that was uh, uh, Capital One, Wells Fargo and Ally are the numbers were the top three uh, financial uh, uh, banks for the auto industry. They told them that they're leaving in 60 to 90 days. So get in, get someone else. And of course, there isn't anyone else. So if, you, if you're a used car lot or an auto dealer and your lender goes away, you're in deep trouble. And of course, these guys live on that, uh, on those uh, credit lines. And when your credit line is yanked from you, you're just, you're just, you're just cooked. You're, you're done. And that's, that's coming. This isn't here yet. Uh, it's been announced. And when that comes, that's going to be very, very difficult. I mean, it's just really, really hard for auto dealers. So one of the guarantee things is that as they raise the as they threw that liquidity in, we got inflation. What do you think is going to happen? You put trillions and trillions of dollars into the uh, into the economy. What really? What do you think is going to happen? Prices skyrocketed, and of course, now that we take the liquidity out, prices are collapsing. So you've got the M two, which is this red line, that is uh, that is collapsing. So it's coming down. And look what's following it, CPI. We got our CPI, and that's coming down. Now, you know, the federal, the, the government did uh, did cheat a little bit because they changed the way they calculated it. So it was it was already, it was destined to, to go lower anyway because they've changed the way it's calculated so that it, it's going to give a lower number. But it is coming down. Even the way they calculated it, it's coming down more than what they thought. And uh, so that's, uh, that's the CPI. That's, that's a good thing. But we're getting the, the uh, producer price in, uh, uh, index coming down as well. And that's at the beginning. And that's coming down radically. So you can see future. When that's, the PPI comes in, we're looking at, you know, a five or six or seven month lag. Prices are going to come down at the producer level. So that means that prices are going to come down. Now, we could have deflation for this. We had inflation. You know, the pendulum's moving. And over on one side, you got inflation. On the other side, you got deflation. We're heading towards deflation uh, on this. So prices are literally collapsing. And what's happening is the banks have no more money. I mean, it's all going into treasuries, you know. So I mean, if you had deposits, people are concerned. If they go over $250,000, they could uh, could lose their uh, their money. So they're taking that money and putting it into, you know, 30, 60, 90 day treasuries, two, one year treasury, two year treasury, five year treasuries. They get four or 5% pretty much. Um, risk-free so why wouldn't you do this they're taking it out of the banks well this destabilizes the banks and you know what happens the banks make money lending money but if they don't have any money to lend you don't make any money and the little bit of money that you have you get to be very very particular as to who you're going to give it to so your standards start uh, going up and the credit standards start deteriorating this leads to a much much tighter economy it's like having another uh uh, rate increase because it puts brakes on the economy. We're heading right into that. This is this is going to be a real problem. It's going to certainly affect mortgages, uh, credit cards, auto loans, uh, certainly real estate loans. Uh, if you've got a uh, say, you're going to build a big uh, office complex or apartment complex, you're going to have trouble getting financing for these things. 
So if you're building a factory or something, uh, you're going to be looking really hard at what you're going to do. So certainly going to affect us. You just have to know that, that that's going to happen. So you finally get demand destruction, and we're starting to get that PPI is coming down really, really radically. I think we're going to see much lower prices. So the commodity section is probably going to uh, deflate a little bit. Not a bad thing for us. I mean, it's just, I'd love to see food come down a little bit, huh? But I think autos are going to come down. I think you're going to see household goods come down, um, you know, and it's going to affect my industry. So let's just see what's going to happen here. So, you know, uh, we don't, we show our stylized versions. We don't, you, it's so boring to take a look at the calculations because they squiggle around. Nothing goes straight up or straight down. It kind of squiggles around. But one thing is certain here is that uh, in the real estate industry, uh, we have two peaks. We have uh, one peak one, which is generally the most important one because that's where all the momentum was. That's when everybody was just scrambling to buy a property. They're trying to outbid each other. They're paying cash. They're borrowing money. You know, they just can't wait to get a piece of property. That's typically the, the, the number one peak. We we know that that's, that's in. So that was March of 2022. That's, uh, that's pretty visible. We can see that. Uh, and then there's the second peak. So typically what happens is you peak, you come down a little bit, uh, and then you pop back up a little bit. That's peak two. And then you you complete the cycle and you come down pretty pretty drastically. Now, here in Phoenix, we came down about 10.56% from our peak. And that went down into the trough. And then we popped back up a little bit, which I think is peak two, which would be textbook for this. And now uh, we've recovered probably four, five, six percent uh, since the uh, uh, from, from the, the, the first trough. And so it's not quite so bad. So I actually think we're coming into peak number two. And then after that, I think we uh, we start heading down. Now, I'm going to tell you that Charles uh, Hugh Smith did some outstanding work. I've, 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 t I've talked about him before. I just think that he's done some absolutely incredible work. He's talking about uh, bubble symmetry, and he's gone back to, uh, to the bubbles. He went, this is a uh, this is a dot com bubble, talking about how they always retrace back to where they started. So uh, it doesn't mean they have to go exactly back, but and they don't always have to, but pretty close to that. So he, he used the dot com, and he said it, you could see the pop. And again, on his example, you see the you see the two peaks. You know, when I tell you, they don't go straight down, but they they uh, they peak a little bit. So you see the top came down a little bit, then recovered a little bit, and then it came down and and uh, completed the cycle. That's what happens during a bubble. We certainly had a bubble. You know, there's no if ands or buts about it. Uh, it looks that way in my work. So if we start looking in the housing uh, market, which is which is my asset class, and apply the same type of principles to it, he comes up with probably a 30% retracement. Now, I think we're going to have 30%. I think we're going to have maybe 35%. That's, that's what my work shows. So we're in agreement on this. This is pretty good. But uh, Charles Hugh Smith thinks that uh, we could have an outlier of 60%, which would take it all the way back to the very beginning. That'd be a total retracement. Now that's that's a little unusual. Could it? Yeah, could it could. Now there's reasons for that. Now remember, real estate is regional. So if you're living on a beach in Malibu, that's a whole lot different than being inland in California. You know, so if you're if you're in Chicago, that's a lot different than Scottsdale, Arizona. They're regional. They're a lot different. So let's just talk about what could happen in the different regions. Now. Here's my here's my timing cycle. Now, this is stylized, you know, so that you can look at it. I think we're pretty close to being up pretty near the top. So we're very, very careful what we're buying. I mean, really, really careful. I'm not saying don't buy. You know, if you need a place to live and you've got a five or six or seven year horizon, I don't see you having any problem at all. If you're going to stay you know, a long time, you've got to have a place to live. You, you're, 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 uh, your choices are severely limited. You're either going to rent or you're going to buy. Um, and of course, buying uh, has some great, great uh, opportunities for you. And I think as you go out, you know, if you're in a good market, I think as you go out five or six years, I think you're probably going to be fine. If you've already in the marketplace and you know you're moving from Dallas to, to Phoenix, well, you've already got money that's been seasoned, it's been in the marketplace, it's been at risk for a number of years. And it's appreciated. You're welcome to bring it over here. They're both at risk, whether you're at risk in Dallas or Phoenix, it's going to have basically the same type, type of thing. So those are fine. If you're doing a 1031 exchange, we're seeing a lot of that 1031 exchange from a lot of the, you know, from Chicago, New York, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, uh, Portland, Seattle, uh, from San Francisco coming here to Phoenix. Again, 
you know, this is season money. You're just transferring it that's already at risk, taking from one market, putting another. No problem. It's when you're putting new money into the marketplace that you just want to be very, very cautious. If you have a good deal, I go ahead and do that. Keep in mind that you when you buy real estate, if you buy a house, you get you know you get tax write-offs. You get uh, 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 you get a great place for the kids to, to set settle out. So lots of other advantages, strictly financial. So let me go to my next slide. Now here's the crux of the matter. We have some cities that are endangered. You know, these these cities are in really, really bad trouble. So in Chicago, you've had Citadel leave. You just had, they were in the news uh, two weeks ago with a bunch of young kids that were running up and down the Golden Mile. They were turning over cars and smashing windows and assaulting tourists and and and, uh, and people on the street. Um, and how is this going to work? You know, crime is just running crazy in Chicago, Milwaukee, certainly in, in uh, Los Angeles and Seattle and Portland. You know, and if you've got a family, you're raising kids, you don't want to do this. So people that have the ability are going to leave these areas. They are going to leave. This is going to in, enhance that demographic shift. Now, there's a there's a huge 40, 50 year cycle from the north to the south, from the rust states to the sun states. And that's a demographic shift. And of course, you know, we have these accelerators and crime and business certainly could be one of them. And when you start talking about Chicago, where you're having problems in the downtown area, you know, when we're talking about occupancy, that's only, you know, 45% occupied. Well, you know, the people don't, the employers don't want their employees to come. They're afraid that they're going to be assaulted coming to work. You know, they don't want their employees to have trouble. They have the ability to work at home. They're going to stay home, which then makes the central city almost obsolete. You're going to have a collapse in these cities. And when you start losing the uh, tax base, the entrepreneurs, the financiers, the uh, uh, investors, the doctors, attorneys, and lawyers, uh, high-tech people, skilled, uh, skilled manufacturing, your tradespeople, they start leaving a locale. Well, they take all the tax base with them. You know, they take all the stability out of a town and the town collapses. So we're seeing this in, in San Francisco. You know, we just had Nordstrom's close two of their stores. We had we had Whole Foods, which had a flagstaff. They have not flagstaff, but their flagship uh, uh, premier uh, location and premier store, 60,000 square feet. It's only one year old. They spent a lot of money to do this. It was a showcase. But there's so much crime in a the neighborhood, they're concerned for their employees, and they've closed the store. So Whole Foods, Walgreens, Target, uh, Walmart, uh, Nordstrom's, these people start closing down. And in Chicago, Walmart's leaving. You know, Walgreens and CVS are going to be right behind them. When, when you start losing all the services and the amenities, people are going to leave. And where are they going to go? So they're going to go to Florida, Texas, or, or Arizona. So if we have a... Uh, cycle completion, you know, Florida, Texas, and Arizona will certainly be affected by the by cycle completion, but nowhere near as much as the the prime, you know, the prime movers. So like Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Philadelphia, Washington, you see, they could see some real major problems with their with their central districts where they have a collapse of the retail, collapse of the uh, uh, office, you know, collapse of uh, uh urban uh, residential just people refuse to go there and of course the tax base leaves you know here in phoenix arizona and arizona itself with california leaving people are leaving in droves in california you know california admits to losing a million people in two years a net that's net you see that's the that's the that's the drop is that it's net so that means that they've had two million people influx so they actually lost three million and those three million people are the ones that paid the taxes and we here in, in Arizona got a lot of money. In Phoenix alone, we got over $2.5 billion in, in uh, tax revenue from the people leaving California. It's so good in Arizona, we actually reduced our uh, state income tax from 4.6 to 2.5. So they almost cut it in half because we had a surplus here and it's well run. So this is magnets, magnets of Florida, Texas, and Arizona. So if you're in one of these cities, you have to ask yourself the really big question. Why? Why are you there? If you've got investments there, why are you doing this? If, you, if you're in any of these cities, let's start talking about doing a 1031 exchange and getting you out. You know, there's a great future here in Maricopa County. We have so many jobs. I mean, 
we just got the job survey. Even Texas uh, lost jobs. Arizona gained jobs. You know, there's just there's just so much going on here. But Texas, great market. Florida, great market. Uh, Arizona, phenomenal market. So why would you stay in Portland or New Jersey when you have the opportunity to get here? So I'm pleading with you. Talk to your uh, financial advisors. Talk to your spouse. Talk to your tax advisors. And let's do a brainstorm. See if we can't figure out how we're going to get you here. If I can help in any way, please, uh, please let us know. I, I'm we're here to we're here to help as much as we possibly can. So, do you know how to you know how to reach me? Let me see if I have another slide here and see if uh, if uh, you're here and we can uh, we can change this a little bit. And uh, let's see, is there one more slide? Yes. So we want to talk about this: is that the store closings and going out of business? Don't let that be you, please. Please don't let that be you. So we want you to come here. Come here to Arizona. We want you, we want you here. So this is how you can reach me. If you, if you need me, you're welcome to, uh, to reach me. You know how to, to do that. I'm available to you. I'm more than happy to sit down with anyone you can. My very, very best to you. Bye-bye now.